Okay, we're back live in New York City for Hadoop World 2011. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we have a special walk-in guest, uh, Amr Awadala, the uh, VP of Engineering, co-founder of Cloudera, who's going to be on at 2.30 Eastern Time on theCUBE to go more in depth, but since we saw him in the hallway, we had a quick spot, we wanted to grab him in here. Um, this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the event, talk to the smartest people, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. Amr, welcome back, you're a long time CUBE alum, so I appreciate you coming back on and doing a quick drive-by here. Thanks for the nice welcome. So, you know, we go talk to the smartest people in the room, you're one of the smartest guys that I know, and uh, <laughs> we've you. been friends for years, and um, uh, it was your, my tweet heard around the world by you to find space, and we've been sharing the office space at Cloudera well, for almost great, a year and a half have you. now. And, great to have you. Uh, we're going to be uh, trying to find space because you're expanding so fast, we have to get a new home. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanted to really thank you personally yeah. uh, here on, on live because no, you. you've enabled SiliconANGLE Wikibon to, um, we figured it out early because of you. I mean, we had a, our nose sniffing around the big data mm -hmm. area before, it's called big data, but when we met, talked, uh, we've been tracking the social web, and yeah. really it's exploded in an amazing way, and I'm just really thankful because I've been, had a front row seat in the trenches with you guys, and, and uh, it's been amazing, so I want to cool. thank You're you. You're welcome, and, uh, it was great to have you on board. And so, so you, you've been uh, evangelizing in the trenches at Yahoo, you were at EIR, at Excel Partners, announcing the $100 million fund, which is all great news today. Um, but you've been the real spark at Cloudera as one of the co-founders. One of them. One, one, of them. one of them, but yeah, you know, yeah. one of the main sparks as a yes. co-founder. Yeah. Um, a I lot's mean, changed. Jeff, Jeff Hammerbacker, my uh, co-founder from Facebook, I mean, we both, we said this before, yeah. like, we saw the future. Like, in our companies, we saw the future of where everybody's going to go next. And now Jeff's going to be on as well. He's now taking cool. this whole data science thing to yep. heart, yep. building out a team. We're yep. going to drill that down with him. Yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you think about all this? I mean, like, right now, how do you feel personally, emotionally, and looking at the marketplace, Share with us your... Yeah, I'm very emotional <laughs> today, actually. Yeah, lots of uh, good news. You heard about the funding news. Yes, $100 million uh, dollars for startups. Yeah, no. But no, but the $40, 40 million. million. The oh, 40, 40 million. million. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, that was yesterday's <laughs> uh -huh. moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Today's yes. more money. Was, actually, the news was supposed to come out uh, uh, today. Uh, it came out a bit early yesterday. But yeah, I'm very, very emotional because of that. Uh, it's, a, it's a very it's a yeah. testament from uh, very big name investors of how well we're doing and recognition of how big this wave really is. Uh, also the 100 million fund from Excel, that's also a yeah. huge yeah. testament. And uh, lots of, uh, ho hopefully lots of new innovations or startups will come out of that. Uh, so I'm very emotional about that, but also overwhelmed by the, by the, the, the size of this event and how many people are really uh, gravitating towards the technology, which just shows how much work we still have to do. Uh, going forward, so it's very, very you overwhelming. You guys have a great so team. A bit scared. A bit scared. Mike a bit Olson's a great truth. CEO <laughs> up on stage there. Great guy. We love Mike. Um, just really, he's geeky and he's pragmatic. He's he a is. great strategist. <laughs> and uh, and you got Kirk, who's the operator. Yep. But he showed a slide up at his keynote that showed the evolution of Hadoop. Yes. The core Hadoop, and then he showed yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. year by year. And now we got that that columns extending, and you got yeah. new new components coming out. Um, yeah, yeah. Take us through that that progression. Just go back a few years and, and and walk us through why is this going on so fast and what are the what's the what's the community doing and just yeah and what happened in two thousand eight? You know, talk about that a little bit. Two thousand eight was when we right yeah when we when we started. Uh, so I mean, first two thousand eight when we started, nobody was believing us back then that hey this thing is going to be big. Like we had the belief because we saw it happen firsthand, but m m many folks were dismissive and no, 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 the, this this big data thing is a fad and nobody will care about it. And look and behold today, it's obviously proving not to be the case. Uh, in terms of the maturity of the, of the platform, y you're absolutely right. I mean, the slide that Mike showed showed that only 30% of the contributions happening today are on the uh, Hadoop core layer. Uh, and, 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 and the overall kind of uh, vision there is very, very similar to the operating system, right? Except what this really is, is a data operating system, right? It's how to operate large amounts of data in a big data center. So it's really, it's like an operating system for many machines, as opposed to Linux, which is an operating system for a single machine, right? So Hadoop, when it came out, Hadoop uh, is only the kernel. It's only the inner layers, which if you look at any operating system like Windows or Linux and so, so on, the core functionality is two things storing files and running applications on top of these files. That's what Windows does, that's what Linux does, that's what Hadoop does at the heart. But then to really get an operating system to work, you need many ancillary components around it that really make it functional. You need libraries, you need applications, you need integration, I.O. devices, et cetera, et cetera. And that's really what's happening in the Hadoop world. So it started with the core 
OS layer, which is Hadoop HDFS for uh, storage, MapReduce for computation, but then now all of these other things are showing around that core kernel to really make it a fully functional, extensible uh, data opening system. I wish we had a little replay button, but let's just put the pause on that because this is kind of an important point. And for the yes. folks out there, there's a lot of different analogs, people, uh, metaphors are used in this business. Oh, yes. it's the Linux, I want to be, it's just like Red Hat, right? Yes. We've kind of used that term. And the business model is. But talk a little bit about, you just mentioned, you know, yeah. not like Linux. Just unpack that a little bit deeper for yes. us. What's the difference? You mentioned Linux is, is, can you replay what you just said? That was really uh, compelling. No, so uh, I was actually talking about the similarity. The, the similarity, and then, I can, uh, okay. and then I can talk about the difference. The similarity is the heart of Hadoop is a system for storing files, which is HDFS, and a system for running applications on top of these files, which is MapReduce. The heart of Linux is the same thing, a system for storing files, which is ext4, and a system for scheduling applications on top of these files. That's the same heart of Windows and so on. The difference though, so that's the similarity. Yes, okay, got the that. The difference is Linux is made to run on a single node, right? And Windows is made to run on a single node. Hadoop is really made to run on many, many nodes. So Hadoop is, is about taking a data center of servers, a rack of servers or a data center of servers, and having them look like one big massive mainframe built out of commodity hardware that can store uh, arbitrary amounts of data and run any type of application. Hence the new components like the hives of the world. So now, so, so now on. these new components coming up, like Hive, for example, Hive makes it easier to write queries for Hadoop. It's it's a SQL language for writing queries on top of Hadoop. So you don't have to go and and, and write it in MapReduce, which we call the assembly language of Hadoop. So if you write it in MapReduce, you will get the most uh, flexibility. You will get the most performance, but only if you know what you're doing. Very similar when you do machine code. If you do yeah, machine code yeah. assembly, you will you will be able to do anything. But you can also shoot yourself in the foot and crash yeah. the whole system, <laughs> right? So same thing with MapReduce, right? Yeah. When you use Hive, Hive abstracts it out for you, so you write SQL, and then Hive takes care of doing all of the plumbing work to get that compiled into MapReduce for you. So that's Hive. EdgeBase, for example, is a very nice system uh, that augments yeah. Hadoop, makes it low latency, and makes it uh, uh, makes it support update. Yeah and insert and delete transactions, which HDFS does not yeah. support out of the box. So it's more like a database, it's more like MySQL, my yeah. the analogy of MySQL to Linux is very similar to EdgeBase to HDFS. Yeah. And, and what's your take, Amr, from a, you know, your founder's hat on now, um, yeah. on the business model similarities and differences with, with Red Hat? Yeah, so actually they, they, they are different. I mean, the, 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 sim the, similarity, the similarity stops at open source. We are both open source, right? In, in the sense that the core system is open source, is available out there, you can look at the source code, you can validate it and so on. The difference is uh, with Red Hat, Red Hat actually has a license on their bits. So there's the source code and then there's the bits. So when Red Hat compiles the source code into bits, these bits, you cannot deploy them without having a Red Hat license. Uh, with us, it's very different. It's no, uh, we have the source code, which is Apache. It's all in Apache. We compile the source code into a bunch of bits, which is our distribution called CDH. These bits are 100% open source, 100% free. You can deploy them, use them. You don't have to pay us anything. The only reason why you would come back and pay us is for uh, Cloudera Enterprise, which is really when you go operational. When you become operational and mission critical, Cloudera Enterprise gives you two things. First, it gives you a proprietary management suite that we built, and it's very unique to us. Nobody in the market has anything close to what we have right now. That makes it easier for you to deploy, configure, monitor, uh, provision, uh, do capacity planning, security management, et cetera, for Hadoop. Nobody else has anything close to what we have right now uh, for that management suite. That is unique to Cloudera yes. and not part of Apache open source. Yes, it's not part of Apache open source. Yeah. You only get that as a subscriber to Cloudera. We do have a free version of that that's available for download and it can run up to 50 nodes just for you to get up and running quickly. Yeah. And it's really very simple. It has a very simple installer, like you should be able to go, fire off that yeah. software, and say install Hadoop, these are my servers, and it would take care of everything else for you. It's like having these installers, you know, when Windows came out in the beginning, and you had this nice progress bar, and you can install applications very easily. Imagine that now for a cluster of servers, right? Yeah. That, that's really what this is. The other reason why uh, people subscribe to Cloudera Enterprise, in addition to getting this management suite, is getting our support services, right? And support is uh, necessary for any software, even if it's free, even for hardware. If, think, if I give you a free airplane right now, just give, come and just give it, here you go, here's an airplane, right? You can yeah. run this airplane and make money from passengers. You still need somebody to maintain the airplane for you, right? Yeah. You can still go and hire your own mechanics, maybe? To, to yeah. We'd yeah. have a tweet up, Amr. <laughs> 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 you can hire your own mechanics to maintain yeah. that airplane, but we tell you, like, if you subscribe with us as the mechanics for your airplane, the support you will get with us will be way better than anything else, and the economics of it also would be way better than having your own stuff for doing the maintenance for that airplane. Okay, final question, and we got a one minute because we slid you in real quick. Cool. We're going to come back for folks. Amr's going to come back at 2.30, so come back. Sure. That's Eastern time, and we'll have a more in-depth conversation. But just share with the folks watching, um, 
your view of what's going on in the Apache and, and you know, there's all these kind of weird, you know, FUD being thrown around. Oh, the clutter is not this and that. And you guys clearly the leader. We talked with Kirk about that. And we don't need to go into that. But just share with us what's going on. I mean, what's the real deal happening with Apache, the code, and you have a unique offering. Which I mean, the real deal, and I, I advise people to go look at this blog post that our CEO wrote called, uh, by uh, Mike Olson wrote called The Community Effect. And the real deal is there's a very big, healthy community developing the source code for Hadoop, the core system, which is HDFS and MapReduce, and all the components around, uh, around that core system. We at Cloudera employ a very large engineering organization. In fact, our engineering organization is bigger than many of these other companies in the space. Just our engineering is bigger. Yeah. And if you look at the whole company itself, it's much, much bigger than any of these other players. So we, we do a lot of contributions in, uh, to the core system and to the, the, the projects around it. However, we are part of the community, and we're definitely doing this with the community. It's not just a Cloudera thing, for the core platform. So that, that's, that, that's the real deal. All right, yeah, so yeah. here we are. Armour, the uh, co-founder, congratulations. Uh, great funding, $100 million from Excel Partners who invested in you guys. Um, congratulations, you're part of the community, we all know that. Just kind of clarifying that for the, on the record. And uh, you have a unique differentiator, management suite, and the enterprise stuff. Good and, the stuff. and the experience. The experience, yeah. I, I yeah. think a huge differentiation we have is we, we have been doing this for three years ahead of everybody else. Yeah. We have the experience across all the industries that matter. So when yeah. you come to us, we know how to do this in the finance industry, in the retail industry, in the health industry, in the government. So, so that, that, that's something also that's so, so I just, for the audience out there, Amr's coming back at 2.30. We're going to go deeper into these. Oh. The highly decorated Amr Awadah. the general yes, Check this out. I mean, is there any <laughs> color that he doesn't have? Thanks There's very more much for stopping by quickly. <laughs> he's, in, he's in the uniform, too. The Cloudera logo on yes, the shirt. Sir. There you go. Uh, expecting some of those for us, too, cool. someday. Um, great. So we'll great see to you see you again. Yeah, love love yeah, Amr. Great, great friend.